This is going to be Revelation chapter 16. So Revelation chapter 16 and verse 1, it says, And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. The scene in Revelation 16 shows the angels pouring out the wrath of God, drowning the world in complete horror. And the end times are very scary times. That's what this is going to be about, the end times. Right now we are in the last days of the church age. Times are bad, but not as bad as they will be in the time of Jacob's trouble, what you know as the tribulation. In chapter 16, we will be studying about what the world will be like right before Jesus Christ comes back to set up his kingdom on earth. And I'm going to describe this time using Revelation chapter 16. So Revelation chapter 16 and verse 2. It says, And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. So number one, the end times is a time of branding. And people are going to be branded with the mark of the beast in this time period. With, without this, they can't buy or sell according to Revelation thirteen seventeen. This mark also automatically damns their soul to hell according to Revelation 14, 10. And some believe that cutting off the right hand or dying as a martyr and getting your head cut off where the mark is will give the person another opportunity to be right with God. And this is an interesting idea, but Revelation 14.10 seems to teach that there is no turning back. After one has taken the mark, they're going to be damned to hell forever. And the Antichrist will have every person that's on his side, he'll have them branded with a mark. And this mark will call it cause a noisome and grievous sore. As the verse says in Revelation 16.2, And many believe it is like leprosy which according to Leviticus 13.47 can get in your clothes. And that is why Jude, in the book of Jude, he talks about hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. If you get that mark, that noisome and grievous sore can get in your clothes. Possibly. Job had boils all over his body, and he was in unbearable pain. It seems these Christ rejectors in this time period who take the mark are going to have a similar problem. It is only the ones who take the mark who get a sore. It is, it is, or it isn't only the ones who take the mark who get a sore. It is also those who worship his image. There is worship involved in taking the mark. And many will see the beast as a way to have a better life. They go to him to preserve their physical life instead of turning to God for eternal life. Uh, but not only is it a time of branding, it is also a time of blood. Revelation sixteen three through 6 says, And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shalt be. Because thou hast judged us, for they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Notice verse 3 says, The waters became as the blood of a dead man. So this could be that the waters are without oxygen, and this causes all sea life to die. Uh, blood turns black without oxygen, so there is going to be dark water. And this is why horror movies use dark water. All that stuff is a picture of what's coming. Every living soul is going to die in the sea, as the verse says. And many say that animals don't have souls. Maybe they do and it just isn't a, an eternal soul. Or maybe during this time, times are so bad that people have somehow moved underwater. And that's why that there are souls down there. But who knows? We aren't there yet and it's just something interesting to think about. But now verse 4 of Revelation 16 says, The angel pours out his vial upon the river and fountains of waters, and they became blood. So a lot of the water is going to turn into literal blood. 
And imagine going in your bathroom to take a shower and blood comes out of the showers. And this could be where the saying bloodbath could come from. But that is the only way people will be able to bathe. These people rejected the living water and will have to have bloody water instead. The living water is the Lord Jesus Christ. If they would have came to Jesus Christ, then they would have got living water. Now they have bloody water. Revelation 16.5 calls this angel the angel of the waters. Maybe God has angels that deal with things just involving water. Maybe it is the angel from John 5.4 that troubles the waters. Who knows, a lot of the book of Revelation, I end up just having to speculate about the things in it. But this angel of the waters gives glory to God in verse 5. It is a sinless being and we could learn a lot from the angel. This lesson is give glory to God. Although all these bad things are happening to people, the angels aren't saying, I just don't know why God is allowing all this bad stuff to happen. You hear many people say that when something bad happens or a tragedy happens, they'll say, I just don't know why God let that happen. The angel didn't do that. The angel takes orders from God, does what he says, and then gives him glory. No questioning God is involved. But this is going to be a time of blood, a time of bloodshed. The angel says in verse 6, For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. In the time of Jacob's trouble, the Antichrist and his people will have drink offerings of blood. A drink offering in the Old Testament was something you poured out to God, and these evil people will pour out the blood of saints on the ground after they kill them, possibly even drink it, and there is something about blood that is connected to Satanism. All the serial killers love blood, and since blood is forbidden throughout the book, Satan will most likely incorporate it in the worship of the beast. But the wicked men in this future time will shed the blood of the saints, and their blood will cry unto God from the ground, as well as their prayers. They will cry out vengeance, and that is what they will get when Jesus Christ comes back at the second advent. Revelation 16, 7 says, And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. Yet again, this righteous being isn't questioning God. They aren't saying, That's just one thing I never understood, is why God would allow such a horrible thing to happen. Don't you get tired of hearing people say that? I know people get in horrible situations, and they sometimes say things they don't mean. But anything bad that happens is because of sin, and we all deserve bad things to happen to us in our life. The real question is, why does God allow such good things to happen to such sinners like us? Not why does, good thing, why does bad things happen to good people? We aren't good, and we deserve bad things to happen. But not only is it a time of branding and a time of blood, it is also a time of burning. Revelation 16, 8 and 9 says, And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. Imagine the power of the sun. Then remember that God made the sun. The sun is going to burn men with fire during this time and that is why revelation seven sixteen lets us know that the saints who go through the horrible time will one day be in a place where neither the sun lights on them nor any heat uh, this is a horrible time imagine being thirsty from the heat but yet the water is bitter and the water is bloody you have pus and ooze all over your body because you took the mark of the beast. And if you turn the water on to get it off, you just get blood on you. All of these things together are going to equal horrible living conditions. And verse 9 says they're going to blaspheme God because of these plagues and they won't repent. They don't want to retain God in their knowledge. These are people who wanted to be their own God and they have been trying to reach immortality through other means. They are presently trying to reach immortality through transhumanism. But the sun can just melt the metal or the steel or the fake body parts if it gets hot enough. So it's a time of branding, a time of bloodshed, a time of burning, and a time of blackness. 
And Revelation 16, 10 through 11 talks about a time of blackness and darkness. It says, And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seed of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness. And they gnawed their tongues for pain and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. And imagine the darkness covering the earth that you can feel it. Imagine not knowing what's going to be bumping around in that darkness and the blackness that's over the land. It's hot, it's dark, you're thirsty, and you can't see where you're going. The world will, will watch their spiritual, or the world will match their spiritual condition. They are dark, and their heart is black. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. This is the opposite of the kingdom in eternity. The kingdom of God, because there will be no night there. In the kingdom of heaven, we are children of light, and we will walk in the light as he is in the light. So the world then will match our spiritual condition. But verse 11 says these people are going to continue to blaspheme. And that is why you could also describe this time as not only a time of blackness, but also a time of blasphemy. And there will be no need of a blasphemy challenge to talk people into cussing God. It will be automatic for these God-haters to cuss God. These people are going to be so full of iniquity that their love has waxed cold. In the time of Jacob's trouble, you are dealing with atheists who kill babies, kill people who don't agree with their satanic religion, and these people only care about satisfying the flesh. If drug trafficking and sex trafficking is bad now, Imagine what it will be like in this future time period where the love of many has waxed cold and God's people will probably be used as sex, slaved, sex slaves. It's going to be a horrible time period. And these people will not hold back when it comes to blasphemy. In Acts twenty six eleven, the apostle Paul, before he was saved, persecuted the church and he says he compelled them to blaspheme. The Antichrist henchmen will do the same thing to God's people. They will be compelled to blaspheme and take the mark. And someone said a saint in the tribulation would never take the mark. But sure he can. If a Christian in the church age can blaspheme, then why can't one? Why can't a saint in the tribulation blaspheme? But not only is it a time of blasphemy, it is also a time of battle. In Revelation 16, 12, it says, And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And this angel dries up the water so that these armies can gather themselves together faster. Imagine if there's no water, then the, the, the armies and nations against God can just get themselves together faster. If the wicked nations are gathered together, then Jesus Christ can just annihilate all of them at a faster speed. Revelation sixteen sixteen says, And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. And this is where Jesus Christ will slay the Christ rejectors and the blasphemers. Not all of them are going to die, but the majority of God-haters are most likely going to be killed. Armageddon isn't a movie, it is a place. It is the valley of Megiddo, where the blood is going to run up to the horse's bridles. He's going to give them more blood to drink. Exodus 15.3 says, The Lord is a man of war, the Lord is his name. And Jesus said, I came not to bring peace, but a sword. And at the advent, he comes back with a sharp two-edged sword that proceeds out of his mouth, and he gives a new meaning to the phrase, words hurt, because he is the word of God. And they are going to be in much pain, as the Bible says. Revelation sixteen thirteen and 14 says, And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth into the kings of the earth, and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. The spirits of devils get the nations together, but it was God's purpose to get the nations together himself. And this shows how God will use wicked spirits, wicked men, and the devil to get what he wants done. He'll use bad characters 
to fulfill his will. And this is counterfeited in movies where the bad guys secretly help the good guys. Zephaniah three eight says, Therefore wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms, to pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. So it's God's purpose and plan to get, have all these nations gathered together so that he can just wipe them out. It is his determinations to gather the nations. Joel 3.2 uh, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them therefore my people and for my heritage Israel whom they have scattered among the nations and part of my land. But not only is it a time of blackness, a time of bloodshed, a time of branding, a time of burning. It's also a time of Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. Revelation sixteen thirteen through 14 says, And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Beelzebub means Lord of the flies. Unclean spirits are like flies. And Beelzebub is the prince of the devils. According to Matthew twelve twenty four. he is the devil. His satanic trinity will be wrecking the earth during these times. Not only are unclean spirits pictured by flies, they are also pictured by frogs and unclean birds. And that is why Babylon gets inhabited by every foul spirit and every unclean and hateful bird. And that is why Isaiah 34 talks about the lake of fire on earth and talks about the owl and other unclean birds. But these spirits are going to be working miracles. Second Thessalonians talks about the Antichrist using all power and signs and lying wonders. And the false prophet will be able to call down fire from heaven. And these will be signs and miracles to deceive the masses. And not only is it a time of Beelzebub, it will be a time of beholding the king coming back. Revelation sixteen fifteen says, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Jesus ascended up to heaven slowly in front of the disciples, and an angel said, Why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go. Revelation chapter 1 says, Behold, every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. Imagine beholding the king coming back on a white horse with a bunch of other people coming back on a white horse behind him. You will be beholding the God who will slay you. It's a time of beholding the king coming back. Revelation sixteen fifteen says, Behold, I come as a thief. You are going to be beholding God Almighty coming to kill you if you're not saved. And John the Baptist saw Jesus and said, Behold, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. He came to save sinners the first time. He is coming back to kill the sinners the second time because they rejected him. And when they crucified Jesus Christ, uh, it says in John nineteen five, Pilate says, Behold the man. It says, Then came Jesus forth wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man. And this time he is coming back, and people will say, Behold, he cometh as a thief. And they won't crucify him this time. This time when they say, Behold, they're not going to be crucifying him. He's going to be wearing a crown of th not going to be wearing a crown of thorns. He's going to be wearing many crowns. And maybe the ones we tossed him at the judgment seat of Christ is the ones he's going to be wearing. But they're going to be saying, Behold, he cometh as a thief. But not only this, not only is it a time of branding, a time of bloodshed, a time of Beelzebub, a time of beholding the king coming back. It's also a time of Babylon's destruction. Revelation sixteen seventeen says, And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air. 
And there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. What's done? The end of man running the government. Jesus Christ is going to rule with a rod of iron. Revelation 16:18 says, And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. People will be hiding in the dens and rocks of the mountains, but how will this save them from an earthquake? Why would you hide inside dens and rocks and underground when there's a great earthquake? People will be dropping into the pit just like Korah in the book of Numbers. Uh, Revelation sixteen nineteen says, And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nation fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. So Babylon comes into remembrance, and remember that God remembers that wicked stuff you do every day, and until you get it under the blood by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, those sins makes you damned for hell. you got to get your sin under the blood. You are presently under the wrath of God if you're not saved. And Babylon comes to the remembrance of God and they are going to drink the wine of the wrath of God. So people wanted to drink so much wine, that is what they get. They tried to accuse Jesus Christ of drinking alcohol, so he forces them to drink it. Revelation 16.20 says, And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. So the mountains are going to collapse. All the Christ-rejecting doomsday preppers will, who moved out of the cities and up into the mountains will also feel the wrath of God. I mean, the mountains are going to collapse. There's no place to hide. But this has been Revelation chapter 16, and I hope this has put the fear in you that you need to get saved and not go through the horrible time of the time of Jacob's trouble. The Bible is clear on how to be saved. In 1 Corinthians fifteen three through 4 it says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. So the gospel, the good news, the glad tidings, is that Jesus Christ died. He died for you he was buried and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Jesus died for your sins because you're a sinner. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And you, you need to know that you're a sinner. You need to know that you failed God. You've broken his commandments. You have offended an almighty God. And Jesus Christ died by shedding his blood. He shed his blood on the cross to pay for your sin debt. And if you will come to him as the guilty sinner you are and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, then you can be saved and have eternal life. But you have to rely on Him and Him alone as payment for sin, not on your good works. You can't work your way to heaven. You can't, can't do enough good things and live holy enough to get to heaven. If you think that you can live holy enough to get to heaven, then you're saying what you did is greater than what Jesus Christ did. You didn't live as holy of a life as Jesus Christ and you you can't uh, pay for your sin debt. Jesus Christ paid for your sin debt on the cross. If you could pay for your own sin debt, then Jesus Christ died in vain. What would be the point in Jesus dying for you if you could work your way to heaven and do good enough to get to heaven? If you think you're good enough to get to heaven, then you're ignorant of God's righteousness. And you're going about to establish your own righteousness. But if you want to be saved... Come to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner you are and believe on Him as your crucified, buried, and risen Savior.